Welcome to the Warrior Way Podcast, where we talk about all things Liberty Christian School. I'm your host for today, Jared Malinchek, Assistant Head of School, and I'm so glad you're joining us for today's show. Today is episode number 48, and we're talking academic excellence and scholarship with one of our awesome seniors, MJ. And so with that, let's dive into today's conversation. MJ, thanks for being on the podcast today. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Yeah, well, I'm excited to talk to you, and I think it's going to be an awesome story to be able to share with our Liberty community. So I think it'd be really helpful before we jump into today's topic, we're going to highlight academic excellence and scholarship, but I think, tell us your your current grade, uh, how long you've been at Liberty, and maybe just something you just love or enjoyed about being at Liberty. Yeah, so I am a senior. I've been here since seventh grade. I actually came 2020, COVID year. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> and I just like the flexibility that Liberty's allowed me academically with dual enrollment, with moving online a little bit last year, and just the willingness to do some academic and personal accommodations. So Excellent. So I'm. we're going to highlight in this conversation uh, many folks know about Liberty's upper school program that we have a lot of different options for college. And as, as a short commercial, we actually really have three different kind of pathways for college credit. We have an AP program with lots of different AP classes. We have a, a new but emerging program with UT called OnRamps. That's not a full endorsement of UT. It's just that's who provides it. And then the third program we offer, which you're going to help highlight today, is our dual credit program. And I would like to know, as we talk about dual credit, I'm going to leave at least something in uh, in the bag because there's something really cool that you did with dual credit that we'll talk about towards the end of this conversation. But when did you first hear about dual credit options at Liberty? So I first heard about dual credit options in ninth grade. I was talking to my academic advisor and I was just looking for ways to kind of fast track a little bit. Mm -hmm. I knew I, I had had a friend at a different school that had done a year of college before she graduated. And I was like, that sounds really awesome and (laughs) probably cheaper, which is always great when it comes to cost of college. (laughs) And I was just looking for different ways to kind of speed up my academic track. And Ms. Downing, I believe, is the one who first mentioned it. Mm -hmm. And so we just kind of started talking about that and about what the options were. At that point, I believe there was only one math class. There was a single math class that was available, college algebra. Uh And so we kind of started with that and just kind of worked our way up. So that's a great step to this because you've done obviously a a heck of a lot more than just one class, but tell us uh, without giving all the details away, but how have you taken classes in this program? Is it mostly online? You've taken dual credit classes in person. Have you been taking them during what we refer to in academics as the fall semester or spring semester? Have you taken summer classes? Just kind of give us a little bit of a overview of the kind of work you've put in. Yeah, so I have done all my classes online. Mm -hmm. I started out just doing, the first year I did it, I only did the spring semester. Okay. I took one class spring semester, but after that, I started doing it pretty much year round. So I've done it fall, spring, and both summer mini-mesters. Excellent. And tell us, if you don't mind, mini-mesters, are those the five-week courses? Yes, they are. Yeah. And and as a personal preference, have you liked those, disliked those? What's your take on the mini-mesters? That depends so much on the class. So for example, I (laughs) could not have done anatomy and physiology in five weeks because that would have not gone well. But something like Texas government where I already knew a little bit about it, it Mm -hmm. wasn't all completely new information. And it was just sort of a slightly less heavy coursework load was good to do in the mini semester, and for me personally. And let's talk about your workload a little bit. And for those that maybe don't know what this looks like. Liberty does offer dual credit classes in person. We have a suite of those from English to math. We have a couple different offerings. We have a speech offering this year. Now you went the online route, which is you mentioned part of that flexibility you loved about Liberty. Let's talk about that workload. So you log into these online classes and the, the contents laid out there in the learning management system. What's been challenging about maybe going back way back to your first time you logged into one of these courses What's been challenging about the experience? And then what kind of supports have you received when you've gotten stuck you know, throughout that process? Yeah, so first thing you do in log on, every school I've used so far has been Canvas. I find the Canvas like interface pretty easy to use. It's pretty user-friendly. Good. So I've never really had technical issues. It can be kind of difficult just depending on 
you know, different instructors have different <laughs> levels of technical yeah. knowledge. Yes. So if you have an instructor that's not maybe super up to date on latest technologies, <laughs> it can make it a little bit more interesting. That's yeah, a nice way of putting it. Um, yes. But for the most part, it's been good. It's been, you know, people that know what they're doing, know what they're talking about and know how to procure an online class mm -hmm. just because it is so different from an in-person class. As for support, I've honestly found a lot of really good support. So I've done it at North Central Texas College and Tarrant County College. Mm -hmm. I've done different classes at both. And they both have very good, they both have 24-7 online learning libraries yeah. and tutors, which is incredibly helpful content-wise mm -hmm. for course load and planning and that kind of stuff. Ms. Michelek has actually been incredibly helpful with that and kind of helping me figure out where to register, how to register, mm -hmm. as well as just the overall plan. So I think both Liberty and the colleges have been really good about supporting dual credit students, especially when it comes to, you know, the non-academic aspect, as well as academic, but the the planning and the knowing how to use your time wisely yes, kind of parts. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, those are the, what we call in academics, the soft skills that we, it's one thing to have a graduation, have a diploma of a student's courses. It's another thing to have a series of skills that will no yeah. matter if you're 50, 7 years old, 25 years old, doesn't matter. They they apply to every stage of life. So tell me, what have you learned? You, I know you're a self-motivated individual. You're a hard worker. What have you learned about yourself as a learner in this process? Because not everybody can do, and I know, again, you haven't said exactly what you've done yet, but what have you learned about how you learn in this process? I have learned a lot about how <laughs> I've learned this process. Something that when taking traditional classes in person, I had found it's kind of hard is I move at my own pace. There will be some topics inside of a class where I'll be like, I'll have it done in a fourth of the time it's being taught in class. There are some topics that I'm like, okay, I could have used a little bit more yeah. time to fully grasp that process. And I think, you know, when you are in an in-person or even online synchronous class, yeah, right. it's very based on the general average of how long a person might need. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the online asynchronous classes just because they allow that ability to move quicker at the topics that you might already have some background knowledge or you just happen to grasp easier, which allows you to take more time to focus on the aspects that you might struggle a little bit more with or even more time to ask for help on those topics. So that was super helpful for me as well as just not I personally have never liked group projects mm -hmm. I enjoy kind of getting into my own mind and hunkering down and doing whatever work I have in front of me and so that personally is just easier for me it won't be for everybody but I, I think there was a good balance of options so there were some group projects but it's all very much based on how much effort you put in individually into the group project rather than the group as a whole, which I found to be a good balance. So those were both very helpful parts in the asynchronous classes for me. Oh, that's fantastic. And I'm so glad you've learned that about yourself because sometimes we miss coming through, especially in a high school experience, it's important to know how we learn. I mean, for anything we're gonna do in our lives. And you, you mentioned asynchronous, just to touch on that. So we're talking, when we say asynchronous in an academic setting, for those who are listening, we're talking about more flexibility in terms of, I don't have to necessarily show up with an online lecture at this time at 10 a.m. on this Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It might be more, the deadline is here and you can work on it whenever you want. So with that, did you like the fact that you could choose when you could work on things in those asynchronous courses? I did. I I get stressed out when it comes to due dates. Sure. So I, <laughs> Every, I think everybody does. Ahead. I have yeah. one class right now where I'm doing it as it's due. And typically, like you said, how that is, is you'll have a week's worth of assignment due mm. on one day or yeah. sometimes two weeks um, due on one day. And it's just, as long as you get them done by that hard due date, you can do it the day before, you can do it the day they're put out. I enjoy it because there are so many classes where you can work ahead for, so for example, my social psychology class, I'm taking currently, I'm at the point right now where I'm doing most of it the day it's due. But mm -hmm. my anatomy and physiology class, I'm a couple weeks ahead on the actual lectures and notes, even if I'm doing the assignments as they come. Oh, wonderful. So it just allows that flexibility of 
if you think you might struggle in a class, working ahead a little bit versus allowing yourself a chance to learn how to manage time. Because, you know, if you're taking classes and you leave all of them to the last minute, that's a life lesson right there. You that's can't right. do that. That's right. So. Yes. So you're less than a year away. I mean, you're talking seven, eight months from graduation at Liberty and getting a high school diploma. But you had another goal in mind when we were having this conversation about dual credit and you went into this and you talked about some of your inspiration at the very beginning. So let's tell the world, I think you've broke some ground because we haven't had a Liberty student do this yet. But what, what was your goal that you set out to do and what does that look like in terms of accomplishing it? Yeah, so as I stated earlier, I originally got into this because I had heard of a friend that actually got their first year of college done yeah. in high school. I was like, that is a really awesome goal. I would be able to get my bachelor's and therefore master's quicker. Right. And as I did it, I kind of started thinking, I think I can do a little more. I would like to do a little more. So I kind of started doing some more research and seeing what the different tracks were. And I realized that if I put in enough work and time, I actually would be able to get my associates at the same time as getting my high school degree. So as of right now, I am on track to graduate with, funny enough, my associates two days before my <laughs> high school diploma uh, or my high school degree, which I find comical. Yeah. You don't, um, you don't need that high school diploma, right? You just, you just, skip, the the you just skip the college diploma. <laughs> um, so I am on track to do that currently, which hopefully will lead to me going to college. And the goal is to be able to get my master's degree in seven semesters. So after graduating Liberty, I plan on attending Purdue. They have a four-in-one advanced program for master's degrees. Excellent, yes. If I go in with my two years, I can. I think I can do my bachelor's and master's in three and a half years or seven semesters. My so goodness. that is the overall goal. But associates would really help me get there. So, <laughs> Well, I have to pause here. But I have one more question for you. And I just want to say how proud that the Liberty team is that you've even done this and that you've taken on a challenge that if you're just looking at a sheet of paper or a website link going, that seems like a lot of work, but you've taken that on and you have put in a lot of work. This is not to minimize that whatsoever. I think what's so unique about it is that you've used some of those soft skills that we we're talking about earlier to your advantage. And to be honest, not every person listening to this podcast, maybe their son or daughter, or maybe a student listening to this, they may not necessarily be in a position to do what you did. And you know, the Lord has us at different stages of our, our development. I will say though, the fact that you were able to accomplish this, do you know ballpark of how many credits went into your associate's degree for those who are listening? I believe it's 60. Yeah, around um, 661 credits, yeah, right? Yeah, 60. I think I'll actually, depending on the last <laughs> class I still have to choose next semester, it'll either be 60 or 62 credits. Oh, that's remarkable. Such a cool testament to, your, to who you are as a person and the, and the work that you've put into it. So before we wrap our conversation, I have to ask you this as we have families and students making decisions about their future aspirations. And I guarantee you there'll be a, more than one person that will hear this conversation and be very intrigued by what you've done and being so proud of your accomplishments. If someone was specifically looking at the dual credit pathway at Liberty, because again, we have on-ramps, we have AP classes and highly successful rates with those. But if they hear MJ talking, they go, you know, I think I want to do that. I'd love to start college with my associates too, or maybe even get really close to it. What maybe advice would you have, maybe the type of learner, the type of student, uh, just some of the things that you learned about yourself going through this process, what advice would you have? I would say two main things. The first is that you have to be able to ask for help. Having this heavy of a course load, you know, it's hard sometimes. You have to be able to ask for help, whether that's in your personal life or academically. You know, you can't, you just can't do an associate's entirely asynchronous if you're not willing to say, hey, I'm struggling with this topic, I need help. Or, hey, I'm struggling with this personal thing and it's affecting how my academics are going. I need help. That is so incredibly important to the entire process is being willing to reach out for support. Amen. And then secondly, just start slow. You know, you don't want to go into it and say, okay, I've just done regular high school classes or even going in at to a high school my whole life. And now I'm going to take four, uh, <laughs> you know, dual yeah, credit classes right. one semester. That's just not a good idea. Because the thing about this is in high school, you typically take eight classes a semester. 
In college, at most, you typically take five. So it's like trying to fit a watermelon into an apple. Right. You're trying to fit the course load of a college class into the time frame of a high school class. If you don't work your way up and practice, it's just not realistic. It absolutely is realistic if you are willing to work your way up. But like I started with one dual credit class semester, then I moved to two, then I moved to three. Right now I will do four dual credit classes both semesters this year, which is, so I'm taking the same amount of high school classes as I am college classes currently. But I would not have been able to do that my first semester. I would have quit immediately if we're being honest. You have to work your way up. So those are definitely the two main things I think is start slow, know yourself, know what your limits are and work your way up and then just be willing to reach out, be willing to ask for support and say, I need help with this or I need help with that. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the lightning round. Here we're going to have our guests answer as many questions as possible in 30 seconds. MJ, are you ready? I hope so. Let's go. Here we go. Morning person or night owl? Ooh, night owl. Fiction or nonfiction? Both. <laughs> wow. Favorite movie you've watched in the last year? I don't... Uh, w- there was a documentary about We Are the World. I don't know the name of it. Okay, fair. The song. Favorite class you've ever taken? Ooh, two. Drawing and painting with Miss Mann and AP World History with Miss Ramsey. Nice. Shout out to Miss Mann and Mrs. Ramsey. Love it. And last but not least, if MJ could go anywhere in the world, MJ would go to where and <gasps> Bulgaria. why. Bulgaria. And why. There is a cave there called the Eyes of God that I want to see so incredibly bad. So, Bulgaria. MJ, I want to give you the final word for today's show. Go ahead and share a word of encouragement or a scripture with the warrior community. Encourage one another. Don't bring people down. Bring people up. Lifting others lifts yourself. You know, hard things are possible when we work together. So, yeah, just be encouraging to yourself and to one another. I want to thank one of our outstanding Liberty Seniors, MJ, for being on the podcast today, along with Mr. Josh and Mr. Hayburn for their behind-the-scenes support of the show. If you have any questions or comments for the show, feel free to drop us a line at podcast at mylcs.com. As always, be sure to subscribe to Warway Podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or on YouTube. Until next time, go Warriors. <laughs>